Welcome to Wrong Time Watch. My name is Kevin, and today we're looking at the Zen 556 and the Moscow DS30. Uh, before we look at the watches, let's just take a quick look at the cases that they come in. They're both very nice cases. This one is leather wrapped, leather on the inside, and has Zen on the underside of the lid there. The, the, the Moscow is a very nice lacquered wood case with the felt bottom. It also has leather and some kind of foam on the inside here. So let's get these out of the way and zoom in on the watches. They are both, of course, German-made watches. I say Zinn is probably a little better known than the Moscow, but... They're both very well-made watches. In fact, the Moscow, about 20 years ago, used to make cases for Zen. I think their relationship kind of fell apart and Zen moved on to another manufacturer to make their cases for them. But I think you can see why I wanted to compare these two watches. They're not exact matches, but you can get the Zen 556 on a leather strap. And you can get the, the Moscow DS30. Actually, I believe you can get it with bracelet, but I was going to say you can get it with the black dial to more closely match this. But this is what I have in hand, so let's just take a look at both of these. Now, right off the bat, you can see the color of the steel is different, which I find kind of neat. The Zen 556 is stainless steel with a satin finish. And the Damasco DS30 is also stainless steel, but it is the submarine steel. So I'm not sure what makes it submarine steel, but I can see that it is a different color. It's more of a gray color. In fact, it looks kind of like titanium. I'll have to, in another video, compare this to a titanium watch. I don't have one um, handy on the table here. But anyway, that'll make for another video. But you can see they both have drilled lugs. Very similar looks with the hands and the indices. In fact, they both have the same movement. They both have the ETA 2824 movement. So a nice twist movement. The Zen does have a display case back though. And a very nicely decorated movement in uh, that gold rotor. Which I do appreciate. I do like to look at the movement from time to time. I wish you can't do with the Damasco, but the benefit of the solid case back on the Damasco is that it is thinner. So let's look at some of the words on the back of the Zen case here. So you get Edestal there, which is stainless steel. And also it has the uh, German word for shockproof. So there's the case back there. And then let's look at the case back here. And then we'll talk the, the measurements and the pricing of these two watches. So you can see this is made in Germany, water resistance. 200 meters, sapphire glass. There's that uh, German word for shockproof. And Edestal as well, which is, again, stainless steel. So, going over the specs, from what I can find, the price for the Zen 556i, well, on bracelet it is $1,510, and then on the leather strap it is $1,340, and then the Damasco on this combination, or I'll say hybrid strap is leather and silicone, this is $952, and that was from Watchman versus Watch Buys. So the size comparison, the lug to lug 
on the Damasco is slightly taller at 47 and a half versus 45 and a half on the Zin 556i. The case diameter on the 556 is 38 and a half. And then on the Damasco it is 39. Although the Damasco does look larger than that half millimeter measurement. I would guess because the bezel looks to be a little bit thinner and I think the dial is larger. Actually, let's put them face to face here. Yeah, I think you can see that. So, maybe it could be the blue versus the black as well. And then the thickness that I mentioned earlier, the Zin 556 is 11.2 millimeter thick versus 10.1 on the Damasco. One millimeter doesn't sound like much, but that is you know, at least a 10% difference. And they both do have 20 millimeter lug width. I think probably because this is on bracelet, the, the Zen looks better in that regard. On the Damasco, the lug width looks a little narrow compared to the size of the watch. But in reality, 20 I think is fine for a 39 millimeter watch. So I'll put these both on wrist in a moment. Let's bring in my Seiko SKX009 for a size comparison. So we'll just put it in the middle here and I'll probably leave this in for the loom shot. That gives you an idea of size. This is 42 millimeter by 46 with a 22 millimeter lug width. Let me bring these up closer to the camera here. And then the Damasco DS30. Seems like the crown sticks out quite a bit on this one. Actually, I'll measure that in a moment here. So 43.1, 42.9, so not much of a difference there. Playing around with these watches before the video, I noticed that the crown action feels better on the Damasco. So it popped out on the Zin. It's the hand winding position. Next position would be the date set. And then we have the time set, which also stops the movement. That's called hacking. Screws in nice and easy though. They do both have sapphire crystal. I, yeah, I, they must have AR coating, but you can't see really a blue hue to it or anything like that. You see the Damasco there, a little bit of glare. I think the Damasco has a better AR coating. But, I mean, you really can't see the crystal on there in certain lights. It's kind of magical. But the dial is in is very nice as well, that real deep inky black just amazing dials even though they're simple they're very nicely done okay actually let's put this one on wrist first and then i'll put the damasco on wrist not exactly an apples to apple comparison but we're here so let's put them on wrist and then close out the video with a loom shot if you haven't already subscribed to my channel i would appreciate it if you go ahead and do so like the video if you liked it, and uh, leave a comment below. Let me know which of these two you would choose. And do you like the blue, or would you go with the black and white? I like this blue; it's different, but I wouldn't uh, wouldn't complain about a black one either. So I'll zoom out here. 
and then get the Damasco on wrist. Pay attention to the thickness here too. See if you notice a difference in the thickness, that one millimeter difference. And this Zen is just so nice. I wish I could keep them all. This watch was kindly lent in by Art. So let's get this guy on wrist. I like this different color. Stainless steel. The submarine steel looks different. Well, because it is, but kind of looks like titanium. It actually feels pretty light too, speaking of titanium, but I'm sure that has to do a lot with the strap that it's on. It just seems a lot bigger than the Zen, but it's only one millimeter difference in the, I'm sorry, a half millimeter difference in the case diameter. I forgot to mention, I have a six and a half inch wrist with the 52 millimeter wristband. So let me know which watch you like better. So this one's probably more versatile. You could perhaps wear it with a suit. I don't know. I'm not a fashion kind of person, but it kind of makes sense to me. And there we go. Oh, yeah, the uh, thickness. Let me zoom back out for a moment. So I don't know if you noticed the difference in the thickness or not, that one millimeter difference. So let's zoom in here and... We'll take a look at the loom. Really curious. I have not. I have seen the loom on this one, but I have not seen the loom on this. Just pulled it out of the box. So let's take a look at that together. All right, I'll be right back with the loom comparison. All right, so on the left we have the DS30. In the middle we have the Zen 556. Then on the right, we have my SKX-171. The Zen is elevated off the table a little bit more because it's on the bracelet. Hopefully that will not skew the results too much. The indices and hands are larger on the DS-30 than the Moscow versus the Zen. And I would give the, the Moscow the edge over the Zen in the loom brightness. They both appear to have the same color loom. And then, of course, the SKX is quite bright as well. If I had to rank them, I don't know, it's hard to say, but I would probably put this in in last place. And then the Damasco and the Seiko would be tied for loom brightness. So, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.